Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our video boss guide for The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We have just completed the Palace of Twilight and entered the boss room with Zant. After a lengthy cutscene which explains how he got his powers, he will teleport back to the, over to the throne and explain once and for all that he's up to no good. Thus initiates the battle with the Usurper King, Zant. This battle involves Zant making illusions of previous boss chambers in which we have to battle him. He takes on some characteristics of the boss that belong to each room. In the first room he takes us to is the boss chamber of the Forest Temple, so if you remember from earlier when we fought Diababa, we had to use the Gale Boomerang to defeat that particular boss. Zant will hover in the air and shoot a ton of energy ball thingies. You can defend against this with your shield or dodge out of the way. You want to use the Gale Boomerang to bring him over the platform and then slash away with your sword. The second phase takes us to the mini-boss chamber of the Goron Mines. If you remember from our battle with Gangoro, we had to use the iron boots to magnetically attach to the platform. Zant will bounce around at different sides of the platform in order to try and make it fall off, but if you use the iron boots, he should be just fine. So once he disappears, then eventually he will start attacking you. You want to stay in the middle to defend and then wait for him until he gets tired. Then you want to take off the iron boots and run over to him. After you smack him up, you want to quickly put on the iron boots again so that he doesn't you know, bounce you off the platform again and make you slide around. The third phase takes us to the boss chamber of the Lake Bed Temple. Just as when we fought Morpheal, we're going to have to put on the iron boots and equip these ore armor so that we can breathe underwater. Zant will then make a very large statue come out of the center, and after a moment, the tongue will then pull away, revealing Zant in all his oozy firing glory. You want to defend against his attacks or move out of the way, and then use the claw shot to pull him over to you once you get the chance. So then after this, you just want to go ahead and smack him up, and then he will disappear after a moment. While you're waiting for the next part, this is a great time for you to get some recovery hearts. Go ahead and slash the nearby jars to refill your life. This next time, Zant will then summon even more into the giant mask thingies, but it makes four of them this time around, and you're going to have to stay in the middle instead. You want to get near the middle of the area, and I recommend taking off the iron boots and swimming towards whichever sound it sounds like he's coming from. This way you can easily dodge all of his shots and swim past, and then land on the ground using the iron boots if you wish, and then use the claw shot to stack him up. The fourth phase takes us to the mini-boss chamber of the Forest Temple. If you remember from when we fought Oop the Baboon, we had to roll into the pillars to make him off-balance and fall to the down so that we could hurt him. You want to run over to Zant, who is very agile and quick for this battle, and he very abruptly starts shooting at you repeatedly, so it makes him quite a bit harder than Oof, in my opinion. It hurts you quite a bit easier. Once you finally manage to successfully smack him with the Gale Blueberry while he's holding still, you can roll into the pillar while he's standing there to make him off balance and fall down. Now all we need is a bright jiggly button, huh? <laughs> Now here, I didn't actually want to kill him because I wanted to show something. Alternatively, you don't have to use the Gale Boomerang at all, and you can roll into the pillars twice when he's holding still. It's a little bit harder that way in my opinion, but it is kind of nice because you're not waiting for the Gale Boomerang to get back to you. The fifth phase takes us to the boss chamber of the Snow Peak Ruins, where we fought Lizetta. Zant will grow to a ginormous size and hover above us. Luckily, the floor's reflection will allow us to see him. You just want to continually run, repeatedly, just to keep running so that way he doesn't catch up to you. I recommend going either clockwise or counterclockwise around the area. Once he lands on the floor, though, you want to turn around really quickly and Z-target one of his feet. You want to use the ball and chain to stay. If you are successful, you will then hop around, collecting his wounded ligament and shrinking. He's kind of quick while he's shrinking, so you want to run over to him and slash him as soon as possible. <laughs> 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 
This sixth and final phase takes us just south of Castle Town. Zant does not take on the traits of any other foe thus far, and he simply uses his own techniques. He creates two twin blades that come out of his sleeves, and as his funky vocals imply, his methods are quite sporadic and slightly unpredictable. His methods are also somewhat similar to the final boss from the previous old title, the Doris Mask. Now his primary attack is to slash forward rather and turn rather slowly. You want to use this to your advantage since you have a slightly longer range with your sword, so you can smack him from afar, or you can circle around to his vulnerable backside since he turns slowly. Now here I kept trying to use the back slice, but I ended up using the jump attack instead. That was not what I was trying to do. Now Zant's other attack is to use a spinning move that is very similar to the great spin from several other Zelda titles. It's very quick and it's best to be avoided, although you can defend against it with your shield as well. Now he doesn't turn very quickly when he's using that spinning attack, so you want to just try and keep him towards the center and not let him touch one of the walls because they can disappear. So you want to kind of keep him towards the middle, and then just kind of circle around him and then just use your shield. In this way you can actually keep him there, wait for his spinning to slow down, and then you can use a jump attack, or more appropriately, a jump strike as I charge it up. So you use the jump strike because you can easily get it in and do loads of damage. As he gets more hurt, Zant will then become more frantic, teleporting around more often, and moving even faster. The trick to beating him is to anticipate his next location. He often appears on the opposite side of you, so if you're in the northwest corner, he will appear in the southeast corner often. So that's kind of how that works, and he also kind of tries to appear behind you. So if you are kind of towards one side, and you're, or you know, you're kind of near the middle, he'll try to appear behind you. That's where he always appears. So just kind of anticipate that. You can like purposefully face away from him, then turn back in order to hurt him. So just roll out of the way, anticipate his next location, and then attack him. After he has finally been defeated, the pieces of the Few Shadow will then be returned to Midna. She's a little upset, apparently because she also hoped this would break the curse on her that keeps her in her imp form. I also think that this has to do with her powers as the ruler of the Twilight, like she would have other powers and abilities that she would be able to use, as they'll go on to explain here in a little bit, too. Zant then calls out, calling them traitors, which doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> so, you know, he has a mutiny and that makes Midna a traitor. Anyway, Midna says that Zant could never be the true leader of the Twilight because, you know, he was only after power to begin with. And that was what he was really after, was the powers of the ruler. So just like their ancestors were doing, you know, he's re she's referring to the Dark Interlopers who were trying to establish dominion over the Sacred Realm because of their greed and everything. So Zant then explains that the curse that is on Midna cannot be taken away since it was placed there by the power of his god, which is more powerful. He makes an interesting statement, though, saying that Midna's powers as the ruler of her people will never be returned to her. And I assume this has to do with her current form as well, so if we can break that curse, maybe we she can get her powers back? He goes on to say that his god has been reborn in this world, which is a little unfortunate. He goes on to say that Ganon will continually resurrect him, because, and because Ganon has, himself has been resurrected a few times throughout the Zelda series, I believe he means this statement quite literally. All this apparently sends Midna over the edge. Okay, everyone walk lightly around Minna. She's slightly horrified by what just happened, so I don't know if that was really what she was trying to do, like maybe like the stray thoughts made the few shadow have a life of its own or something. Anyways, it was much more powerful than she ever imagined it would be, and with it, we may have a fighting chance against Ganondorf's magic. Minda says as much, explaining that she couldn't take the evil power that Zant held, but at least she still has the few shadow. She goes on to say that now she can return the cherished power that was borrowed from Zelda. Now because of the way Minda looks at her hand here, she says this, I, and as well as the context of how she received this power, I believe it's safe to assume that this is the Triforce of Wisdom that she is referring to. Repeatedly throughout the Zelda series, they have vaguely referred to Zelda having a mystical power, which always ends up being the Triforce piece that she holds, so that's why I believe that. Once you regain control, be sure to snag the heart container that is in front of the throne. If you've been following the walkthrough thus far, we have already snagged all of the heart pieces in the game, meaning that this is the final heart container. Yay! With that, go ahead and run over to Midna to teleport out of here. That is it for this chapter, so thank you for joining me, and I will see you guys next time.